Hi, I'm Adam Rogers, uh, Metro Home Theater Group Tech Support, uh, and, and today we're going to be showing you how to do an IP camera setup, uh, as well as kind of a basic overview about uh, a network uh, and how it is set up and from beginning to end. So, uh, guys, from here, what we'll do is we'll kind of jump right into it. Um, again, this is a very basic setup for an IP network. Um, what you're going to have, of course, is you know your your router and modem combo. Most in most cases, uh, if you do have a separate modem and a router, uh, and of course, the physical connection between those will be an Ethernet cable. You'll go from the modem to the router. Very basic and straightforward. From the router, of course, you can either go to a switch or a couple switches, depending on how your network is laid out. Uh, and then from the switch or from the router. Uh, you can go to the NVR, uh, that would be actually the, doing the video recording. Um, and so if it's an NVR with built-in PoE ports or power over Ethernet ports, then of course you don't need to have a switch in place uh, because of course the PoE would be powering the cameras and the cameras would connect directly to the, uh, to the NVR. Now if you're using an NVR without PoE built into it or if you are designing your system in a different way, you'll want to have a network uh, switch that has PoE built into it, again, power over Ethernet. Uh, so from there, the physical connection would look like going from the router out of one of its ports uh, to the network switch, and then from the network switch, it would go to the cameras or the NVR. Um, so very, very simple setup, very straightforward um, uh, for you guys to get everything you know hooked up correctly with it. Uh, from here, we'll kind of dive into some of the other terminology that you'll see as you're setting up these cameras. Um, so one of the basic things, of course, would be an IP address. So uh, most people are very familiar with an IP address, uh, 192.168.0 or .1. Um, those are the, that's what we would call the suffix. Uh, an IP address, of course, is an address given to a network device to find it on the network, to know where it's at, and to communicate correctly on that network. Uh, from there, we have something called DHCP. Now, DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Um, it's just a fancy term for something that gives IP addresses out to devices that have a dynamic IP address setup. Uh, and we'll get in more detail about that next. Um, but first, the DHCP pool or range. Now, this is the range of IP addresses that the router or the DHCP server will pull those addresses from to give to the different devices. Uh, this is very important because when you're setting up an IP network with camera systems, you want to make sure that you're not inside that DHCP pool or range because what will happen is there's an opportunity for the router to give an IP address that's already been given or configured to those cameras. So we don't want to give them the same IP address because it may be stepped on or you may step on something else. So it's very important to be outside of that DHCP range. Um, from there, of course, you've got the difference between a dynamic, a static, and a reservation. Uh, a dynamic or a static IP address, dynamic meaning that it's an IP address that's being given by the DHCP server, uh, and it's an IP address that can change. This is something that happens fairly common, fairly regularly in an IP uh, network if it's using a dynamic address. Um, and again, most residential systems that you'll see will be a dynamic IP address range. So you really want to make sure that um, you, you stay outside of that pool, again, just to make sure that you're not getting stepped on or stepping on anybody else. Uh, from there, we have the static IP address. Now, this is a manually configured. This is one that you have set on the device itself. You've gone into the settings and you've said, I want the IP address for this device to be this IP address. Um, that's something that you can do directly with the cameras. You can go to, you know, sign in remotely to that camera directly and say, this IP address is the one that you will use and then set it from there. You can also use com some configuration tools that we have uh, that will help get that set up in a little bit quicker fashion. Now, lastly, we have reservations. Reservations are kind of a hybrid between a static and a dynamic IP address. The device is set up as a DHCP device, so it's going to ask the router for an IP address. Now, the difference is, is that you have actually logged into the router and you've told the router, I want this device to use this IP address. And so then the IP address is given by the router's DHCP server to that device. So it's kind of a mix between the two of them. Some people like using it uh, with reservation because it's one location to control everything. Some people like the static because then if that one device goes down, everything's still locked in. Um, so it's up to you on how you want to handle things. Uh, I'm going to show you all how to do a couple different ways to, to handle the, the static or dynamic IP addressing. Uh, we'll move on to that later on. 
Um, we also have a term called MAC address. Now, a MAC address is like a serial number for the device. This is actually given out by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. Now, a MAC address is a media access control uh, address. Um, that's actually a, it's kind of like a serial number that's given out by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. Uh, and basically, it's a, it's a number that's designated from that, the IEEE that tells them, uh, that tells that device what it is. Now, um, some devices like a laptop will have actually multiple MAC addressing. You'll actually have one for the hardwired connection and you'll have it for the wireless connection. So each type of connection needs to have its own MAC address. And what the uh, router then does is it uses the MAC address if you've told it I want this device to have a certain IP address, it will use the MAC address to verify that that's the correct device to get that IP address. So it's very important to know what that is as well. And we'll get into more detail about that later using scan tools and different things to find that MAC address. We also use what's called UPnP. Uh, it's universal plug and play. Now universal plug and play a lot of times is used internally within a network for communication from one device to another. We're using the UPnP for communication outside of the network. So what, it, what we use it for is to have the firewall open up automatically certain ports in order for us to communicate to the cloud, uh, which then from there your phone or uh, remote device can actually use that cloud connection to view the cameras with our NVRs. Uh, so that's how we're using UPnP in this scenario, and you'll see that later on when we're actually setting up the, uh, the system as well. Uh, but we'll talk more about that later. So when you have your network, you want to make sure that you plan it out. Uh, you want to make sure before, before you jump in, everything is kind of set. You have a game plan going into it. Uh, it's the same thing with going off of like a blueprint or something like that. You want to make sure that you know what you're doing before you get into it. Um, one of the things that I like to do, there's a couple tools that I, that I like to use. Uh, the first being would be this advanced IP scanner. Now, the advanced IP scanner, there's, all, there's a bunch of different kinds out there. There's angry IP scanner, there's Fing, F-I-N-G. Um, there's lots of different scan tools out there. I prefer the advanced IP scanner just because I feel like it gives me some more information uh, than what the other ones will give out. So you'll see here, our network here for our research and development uses the 192.168.135 suffix. Uh, that's what we use when we're actually testing some of the devices. Um, but very simply, what the program does is you can simply press the IP button here and then hit scan. And what that's going to do is that's actually going to scan the network for all of the different devices that are actually on that network subnet. And what that's going to do is that's actually going to scan the network subnet for all the different devices that are on that subnet. Um, you can, depending on how your, your computer is set up, is you can search for other subnets. Um, but that's getting into much more advanced systems and, and design setup. Um, which is for a completely different video that we'll get into at another time. Um, so as you can see, it's searching here now. We can find all the different, different devices that are on the network. Now, one thing that's really nice about this is that this does help me figure out where that DHCP pool or range uh, is located. Now, I'm very familiar with this network. I use it every day. So I know already that my DHCP pool it starts at 192.168. .135.100, uh, and then it goes up to 200. Now, uh, I know that because, of course, it's one that I use. Now, if you get are out in the field and you find a network that you're not familiar with or you don't have access to the router, uh, you can use this tool to kind of give you an idea of where that DHCP pool is at. Uh, so simply having your laptop, getting it connected to the network, and then running this search tool, you can kind of find out where things are at and deduce where that DHCP pool is going to be at. Um, so very simply, uh, in a residential situation, more than likely they're going to use uh, a DHCP setup for almost every single device. So when you search for it, you'll find that the first one would be the 192.168.1.1. That would be your router. Uh, and then from there, you'll notice that maybe it jumps all the way up to .1.100 or 150. Uh, and so there's nothing in between there. So that's very easily able to tell us that, well, the DHCP pool or DHCP range starts at 100 or 150. Um, so that kind of gives us an idea of where we should put our cameras when we're getting it all set up. Uh, some other tools that we like to use as well, uh, we have actually constructed a network map worksheet for you. Uh, this will be on our website, you'll be able to find it from there. Um, this is something, it's, it's a worksheet, but it's very, uh, it's malleable. You can change it however you need it for each project. Um, I've kind of set it up in a certain way that uh, would fit for, you know, different uh, scenarios. 
Um, so from there, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to go on and find out and kind of fill out the network map to tell you where everything's at. You can use this for jobs that are already done and you need to just keep track of everything. You can use this for when you're planning a job. Um, also, when you're out there uh, on a job site that you don't have control of, this is nice too because it helps you keep track of where everything's at so you don't accidentally step on another device that's on the network. So you'll see here, we have our project name. You can go in there and name it whatever you need the project to be named. The IP suffix or subnet, um, it's already pre-filled out with the 192.168.0 suffix. However, depending on what your network is set up as, whether it be 192.168.1 or .2 or .135 like ours is here, uh, even like AT&T and Apple where they use the, the 10.0.1 uh, subnet or suffix, um, this is something for you to use to kind of keep track of what the suffix is. So you'll notice here, of course, we've got the gateway as dot one. Now, if you are on an AT&T network, a U-verse network, that's not dot one. It's actually dot two five four. So you can go in here and change it how you need to change it. Um, but again, it's a nice way to keep track of it. Uh, your device name. Uh, it's nice to put the model number in there to keep track of where everything is at and what the model number is. If you're using any kind of port forwarding, that's a good place to put it here. Uh, username and password to access the device, and then any kind of notes that you might have. And again, this network map worksheet will be available on our website for you guys to use, so definitely take advantage of it. So there's lots of different tools out there for you guys to find out how the network is set up. Lots of tools out there for you to you know, make sure that things are planned out accordingly for your setup, um, making sure that everything isn't going to be stepped on and it's not going to be stepping on anything else. Um, it's very important to do so. So make sure that when you're designing the network that you fully understand where everything is at. Um, you'll find that certain things may wind up on different subnets. You're going to have a 192.168.0. Uh, you're going to have a 192.168.1. We're going to get into more details about that in the next video when we're talking about the IP cameras um, and how they usually wind up on a 192.168.1. So this is a great tool to have, guys. Make sure you use it when you can. Uh, it's a nice thing to have with you. Uh, and again, when you go on to job sites when you're working on an IP camera system, bring a laptop with you. It's, a, it's an invaluable tool to have. Um, you don't go to a job site without a screwdriver or a set of cutters. Um, you really shouldn't go to a job site for an IP camera without a laptop. Uh, and with our, our camera systems, you need to have a, a Windows-based laptop. Uh, in order to access those cameras. But we'll talk more about that in the next episode uh, where we talk about getting the IP camera set up with the NVR and also with the a laptop. So tune in next for that video.